Ghostbusters is now in wide release, and the movie-going audience finally has the chance to see and judge the movie for themselves, and for its own merits. That is, most audiences have that chance. There are still some territories around the world where the movie hasn't been released yet. And since I happen to be in one of them, I still haven't seen the movie at the time of this recording. So until my review is up, check out Monday and Matt's review for some very fair and balanced thoughts on the matter. Instead of doing a review and commentary about the movie itself, this video will be about the movie's opening weekend performance and what that might mean for its sequel prospects. One of the first things Tom Rothman did when he took over the reins at Sony was to cut $15 million from the Ghostbusters budget, which in retrospect probably wasn't a bad idea. The studio will now admit to a budget of around $144 million, which is about $10 million lower than what earlier budget estimates had it pegged at. It could of course be that those early estimates, which by the way came in after Rothman had cut the budget, were simply overblown. Then again, it is a tried and true practice for Hollywood studios to try to sell underperforming movies as cheaper than they were in order to save face. But let's give Sony the benefit of the doubt here, and just stick with the 144 million figure that is being thrown around. On top of that, the movie also has to recover funds spent on advertising and prints, and with the recent marketing blitz, some have speculated the release to have cost around 140 million too. Variety, however, has the figure pegged as at least 100 million. So again, let's give Sony the benefit of the doubt and assume a total production and release cost of 250 million, keeping in mind that the actual cost is probably higher. Using conventional metrics and rules of thumb, this would mean that the movie needs to gross somewhere between 300 and 400 million worldwide in order to break even. Because remember, the studio doesn't get to keep the entire gross for itself, it has to be shared with the theater chains. And how big a cut of the movie's gross the studio gets depends from territory to territory. Furthermore, the movie won't be released in China, due to the Chinese censor's ban on all things paranormal so the second largest movie market won't help Ghostbusters break even. But breaking even isn't enough. Investors who care only about return on investment put loads of money into this, and they didn't do it to merely break even. No, they want the movie to yield a higher return than investing the same amount into other opportunities would have yielded. So unless it does that, the movie will not have done its job financially. Of course, this isn't a standalone movie so much as an intended franchise starter. Since the movie is intended to start a franchise, it doesn't necessarily need to be as profitable as a standalone movie in order to be considered a success, especially not if the studio is really counting on it. But it still needs to be profitable enough that the studio feels confident that there really is a market for another one. So no matter how much they may want the movie to succeed, they aren't going to make any more unless this one reaches a specified threshold amount they are comfortable with. That is the case with all intended franchise starters, and more often than not, the threshold number required to greenlight a sequel is a closely guarded secret. When asked, Tom Rothman declined to comment on the amount needed, which is probably Sony's official policy on the matter. Paul Feig, however, must not have gotten that memo, because he blurted the figure out anyway, $500 million. That leaves the question, based on the first week in gross, is this figure attainable? In its domestic opening weekend, Ghostbusters grossed $46 million, opening at number 2, behind The Secret Life of Pets, which is in its second weekend. In other words, there will be no TV spots proclaiming Ghostbusters as the number one movie in America. Even so, Sony is publicly celebrating the movie as a gargantuan hit, 
and are doing the proverbial victory dance that this opening weekend is the highest opening weekend for both director Paul Feig and Melissa McCarthy. Well, that is a hollow victory if there ever was one, because this is also the most expensive movie either of them has ever worked on, and the first which was part of an established brand. So it was kind of taken completely for granted that it would be their biggest movie yet. Sony would no doubt have liked to include Kristen Wiig in that stat, but alas, the Martian opened higher. But let's look at the opening weekend figure itself. We've gotten reports and pictures of empty or near-empty screenings coming in all week. So let's be clear about this. A $46 million domestic opening weekend for a wide-release summer blockbuster franchise starter like the Ghostbusters is not good. It is, however, also not down there in flop territory, so it fits rather nicely into the not great but could have been worse category. Internationally, figures are only known for the UK, Australia and Brazil at the time of making this video, and between those three, the movie grossed 19 million over the course of the opening weekend. It should be noted though, that the movie actually opened on Monday the 11th in the UK, so a whole week's worth of business in the UK was lumped in with that opening weekend. All told though, not a bad opening weekend, and while reaching 500 million is not off the table, it is a tall order. The movie still has some big markets left to open in, but a definite challenge facing the movie is that it has already opened in the big native English-speaking markets where the Ghostbusters brand has an iconic status. The brand doesn't pack quite the same punch in many of the remaining markets, and on top of that, comedies don't always translate well across cultures and language barriers, which tends to be reflected in the international box office of most comedies. Regarding the chances of a sequel, Sony's president of worldwide distribution, Rory Brewer, told The Wrap that, While nothing has been officially announced yet, there is no doubt in my mind it will happen, and that he expects Ghostbusters to become an important brand and franchise. If the movie had opened to, say, 60 million, statements like this would have been perfectly accurate. But with an opening of just 46 million, this to me comes across as posturing, aimed at encouraging more audiences to see the movie. Because the actual sequel prospects now ride on how it will hold up in its second week in the US, as well as how it performs in the markets where it has yet to open. Sony has planned their entire summer schedule around this movie, which they want and need to spawn them a franchise, which is something they are in desperate need of. But if the movie doesn't have legs, if it drops badly next week, well then it's not looking good for the shared Ghostbusters universe. We'll keep you up to date as the picture becomes clearer here at Midnight's Edge. But until then, let me know if you think there will be a sequel, and if you even want one in the comments. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Join us for spin-free news and analysis of the happenings and corporate politics behind the scenes of your favorite genre movies, as well as explorations of your favorite characters and their backgrounds and context here at Midnight's Edge.